Hey, I want to welcome everyone. Hey, my name is Jameson Sharp, and this is Michael Graber. He is a black belt, and he is the man in charge here at Gracie Jiu Jitsu from Macon, Kansas City. Yes, and we were coming to you live. So, so, so I want you to go ahead and just tell me your Jiu Jitsu journey and story. That's fascinating. Awesome. Well, I started out uh, getting interested in Jiu Jitsu after about what everybody else did in '93 when we saw Hoist Gracie everybody and the first Ultimate Fighting Championship uh, before it became a sport when it was really no gloves, no rules, no time limits, and multiple fights in the night, you know, three fights to win in the night, uh, which is just unheard of these days. Yeah. Uh, so of course I got drawn in by that. I had some friends that were doing that. There's actually some, some people I work with and some other people that were Cook County Correctional Officers at, in, in Chicago uh, where I grew up. And, uh, so they were doing uh, jiu-jitsu and jet kudo. So uh, they kind of got me hooked on jiu-jitsu. We just kind of really didn't get into it too much, but um, at, at that point in my life, I was trying to make a transition and I moved out to Arizona. So I was able to go out there and transfer my job out there, get instant residency. You know, I was paying about $1,000 a semester to go to Arizona State University, which I went to ASU. Yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> so we're ASU boys. Exactly, so yeah, it was a little probably more, you know, So when I went out there, actually my friend that I trained with, his name was George Marks, a really good friend of mine, he actually came out to Phoenix. I was like, I'm gonna take you to go see Megaton. He's like, you've got to go see him. So Megaton actually came to a seminar at one point in Chicago. So that's how they were affiliated with, knew about Megaton. So they brought me to Megaton. Uh, it was at, at a Boys and Girls Club. So it was this little room, a Boys and Girls Club room. And I went out there that first day and I'd have a game. Have, uh, so I went in shorts and a t-shirt. That's how typically people come the first time, and do shorts and a t-shirt. So I went in there, and by the end of the class, the only thing that was left on my t-shirt was the thick ring. It was completely ripped off because they used the t-shirt as the key. You know, they choked me with it. They did all this stuff with it. It was just like, and the, uh, I think that's some of the things that gets lost is because of this. Oh, it doesn't work on the street. Well, that, that from that day, and I knew immediately, man, they choked me. T-shirt. They did all these things with me, and I was just, and, and I got done, and I was just like, "Wow, this is awesome." You know, some people might, you know, it was it was rough. It was oh, yeah. definitely that that day and age of Megatons Academy was just sink or swim. Sure. Uh, and, and I was at least I was at 21. I was in good shape. Mm -hmm. I was uh, just moving out there as long as I had all this energy and enthusiasm for making a major move in my life. And, it's kind of starting over, first time on my own, right? So 21 years old, away from home, right. living in an apartment, I got my job, I'm going to college, and this is really, honestly, one of the greatest times of my life. Uh, so I started training with him. Uh, I trained for him a little bit, I got injured, that put me back, and so I started this, you know, on and off of training with him uh, as much as I could, and Megaton was such a great guy, you know, I was like, man, I'm, Start student. I lost my job. I got hurt. I had a bad knee injury. I, I couldn't walk for a couple couple months. And uh, uh, basically, I never had surgery. I went back and had surgery a couple years later. I had ACL total reconstruction. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, after that, you know, it was one of those things too. I think that somebody, the doctor said, "Oh, you'll never wrestle again," type thing. So when people tell other yeah. person, yeah, it was a challenge. So it's yeah. like, oh, really? Oh, really? So, but it was it was tough coming back. It was definitely scary. I, I had a a lot of anxiety, yeah. uh, especially about doing stand-up. Because I, you know, in jiu-jitsu, a lot of times we start on, our, on the ground here to, to roll or to, to do uh, sparring. But uh, when I came back, it was, it was really hard to get past that. So um, it was around 99, uh, 1999, when Megaton's cousin, his name was Chago, Chago, yeah. became my roommate. Oh, so yeah. Chago, Hardly speak any any English, you know. But uh, he came, and we became, you know, he's, he's one of my great influences in jiu-jitsu, you know. So I kind of say, oh yeah, you can move in with me because then, you know, I'll get to train with you, and we'll be able to do more things and get out here. And it really, you know, it opened my eyes to kind of the culture because we were both about the same age. But here we came, you know, he came from Sao Paulo. So I thought I was like, oh, I came from you know Chicago, one of the place with uh, you know five million people. He's like, oh, you know, I grew up in Sao Paulo. I was like. 15 million. Yeah. Like, Whoa. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You know? 
So anyways, uh, we became good friends. We, he was kind of uh, a great influence to get me training more. But uh, one of the stories I like to tell is like, oh, well, you know, I thought I'm laying in bed one day, he's gonna come up and wake me up. Come on, Mike, we gotta go, you know? And, and all of a sudden I hear his car start going. I'm calling on the phone, hey man, what's up? He's like, hey bro, I gotta go train. You're not ready to go. If you're ready to go, that's fine, but I'm not your dad, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just like one of those life lessons where you're kind of like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm my own man. Mm -hmm. I need to do this on my own. So uh, from that point, I really, really trained hard. I was at least, at least bare minimum three times a week. Six times a week training, a couple times a day, sometimes. And that was uh, that was my balance. I, I've got a degree in electrical engineering, and I really contribute jujitsu. You know that kind of mind, body, spirit. You know, balancing me out. So you know, because uh, at that point I was like, uh, I don't have time to, to have a relationship. It's like all I'm going to do is jujitsu and train. You know, and uh, go to school and work. So by 2000, uh, I got an internship at Black & Veatch, who I'm still with today after 19 years of working at the same company. Uh, so in 2005, I kind of I, I wanted to go uh, just to see what else is out there. So that's when I had the opportunity. I knew within, within Black & Veatch, I said, hey, if you want to you really want to stay with the company, you should go to Kansas City. That's where headquarters is. And we've got this new group of people doing the work that you do. I do automation on a lot of treatment plans. So we're getting this team together. And uh, I was so fortunate to have those connections. And I moved to Kansas City again, not knowing anybody. Uh, moved here by myself, and, and uh, you know, what, you know, 14 years later, here I am. Uh, but when I moved here, I had such a great opportunity to go travel. So every job that I had at Black and Beach was out in California. So it was, uh, you know, San Jose, San Vicente, San, you know, uh, San Diego County Authority. Uh, Santa Cruz. It's just like the mecca out there. Exactly, it really exactly. Is. So, you know, Claudio Franco was one of the pioneers. He was up in the Santa Cruz uh, area. So I got to train in San Jose with some of his black belts. Got to go down a couple times and meet him. Met a couple of friends who seen you know, and seen you know, Again, that journey of like going different places and meeting all these people who become kind of lifelong friends for you. Uh, and then uh, San Diego, one other big influence on my jiu-jitsu journey was Fabio Santos. He's a uh, one of the only you know, coral belts, you know, one of the pioneers that yeah. came, and he's still in San Diego, and you know, he was just, uh, you know, I loved his game, I loved to always go there, such a, you know, just more or less how he taught, you know, such a, always such a warm, welcoming person, so, uh, you know, after quite a few years, I came out here, started training in local places out here, you know, started, met some friends, and then it's like, at that point, I'm traveling, I, I just didn't have uh, the ability to start my own academy, so I trained, uh, with my friend Jason Berger over at KCBJJ, you know, uh, I came out here and tried a couple different schools. And actually, I went into one school. And long story short, you know, this guy did a, a move to me that was illegal you know, in, in in kind of our sport. It was a, called like a scissor leg takedown. You kind of tripped the guy. Well, he fell on my ankle. And uh, long story short, uh, you know, two five millimeter screws oh, that they put in my ankle. And said, oh man, so. And they were more of an MMA school. You know, they were good guys, everything else. But the first time I walked into KCBJJ and we did the traditional warm up, and, and the class was run there. You know, the, the place I was at before did three minute rounds. We were doing six or seven minute rounds. You know, so I was like, oh, this is this is my home. So it became my home, and uh, I stayed with that until much, much later. I got my black belt in, in 2009, and, and that's a huge achievement. Yeah, your black belt. You know, especially in Gracie Jiu Jitsu. It's a fantastic feeling. Yeah, it, it really was. Uh, I, I, to be honest with you, I didn't want it. I, I wanted to do, as my instructor, Megaton, he's, he's one of the greatest competitors. And uh, if you guys do not, excuse me, if you guys do not know who Wellington Megaton is, is, go research him. If you are in the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu world or Gracie Jiu Jitsu world, you know Megaton. So go look him up. This is what I'm just doing, just right here. So, I really wanted to win a major title and get my black belt on the podium. So I was like, oh man, I don't, I really don't want it. Can we wait? Because now it's time. And it was, it was good. It was in December of 2009, and went out to Phoenix. And for usually just go out there for a Christmas party. You know, they're, they're like family still. So uh, actually, this year we went back. I, I brought some of our guys out there to the Christmas party. So it kind of, you know, it's like Megaton sitting there with people from Kansas City and Oregon and. Uh, Jersey and New 
Mexico, like all his affiliates in Colorado. So all the guys that kind of trained with him to come home one day, and I got to see some guys I trained with. Uh, and another funny story is like, uh, this guy got his black belt. He's like, yeah, he's like, when I came out here, I was driving on I-17 in Phoenix, and he's like, and I saw your car. <laughs> and Gracie's yeah. sitting around the back, and he's like, and I kind of followed you, and it was like, you're speeding and stuff, but that's when I looked up and found you guys, and that's how I found it. And it's, uh, you know, I got a, a lot of stories like that, where it's like, hey, you know, you know, introducing people into jiu-jitsu or getting them started or being there on their first day or doing their first class. And it's just such an honor when people walk up and it's like, hey, you know, uh, you, you taught me my first class and you were there for my first class. And it's just like, wow, you know, what a, uh, what a great experience. So, yeah, you know, that's, that's a great history you got there. And, you know, my history goes way back just like yours does. But I, I wasn't... Uh, I'm not a black belt or anything. I'm just coming back to the store, to uh, the sport after a, a a pretty long absence. But I'm happy to be here. And let me tell you, if you don't train to get to, it's a lifestyle. You change your whole lifestyle. And it's a fantastic lifestyle. It's not only healthy, but it improves your daily function support. Look it up. Bet you, bet you find out that too. So, that's really interesting. So tell me about some of the lessons you've learned along the way about self-defense related to daily life. Um, How is it applied? Well, it, it's a, growing up in Chicago, I think, uh, I, I heard this story a long time ago about like, you know, there's, there's these snakes, they're not rattlesnakes, but they'll, they'll flap their tail like they are rattlesnakes. So it's like, they're not, they're not poisons, they're not, they're not killers. But you you walk like you're a killer. Sure. And that's what Chicago was. It's always like uh, you know a city of hard looks. You know nobody ever looked and smiled at people. You know I think a lot of people just looked at everything and it was kind of like the general thing wasn't hello it was you know yeah. f you you know yeah, <laughs> it was like yeah, yeah. yeah f you too whatever. <laughs> so uh, but growing up and growing up in kind of that environment it's like always thinking I had to prove myself and and always wanting to fight and and trying to be you know you know like a badass sure. you, know, you know hey I, I gotta prove myself I gotta fight people to do that and, and what jiu-jitsu kind of did to me is kind of turn that around I think that's the biggest lesson that I learned in jiu-jitsu is like just kind of respect for everybody you know it's kind of like uh, they call it the judo factor right but you don't know if the guy has a knife or that. you don't know if the guy has a gun or you don't know if the guy has a black belt who's in jiu-jitsu because if you go see Horley Gracie walking down the street, if you go see Megaton Diaz walking down the street, they just look like a normal guy. Normal guy. You would never know that they're that most they deadly just, guys in the world. They would yeah. just rip you apart and that's it. Yeah. And you don't and then you start to learn that, you know, not just all that, just but there's no need to like if I need to prove myself, I go prove in a competition. Not even here. Here's here's where we have fun. In, in the academy here, I think our uh, again we were talking about bowing and stuff. When you bow, you're it's like you're Emptying your cup, you, you drop your eagle, and we're all here to help each other just become better. It's not here to like who's best here. The people that say, hey, I want to be the best, well, then you go compete. Because now you're going to go against other people that want to compete. Because to be honest with you, not, not everybody here competes. Sure. Competing takes so much time and energy and, and, and commitment to be, you know, everybody, there's people here that are, you know, have jobs, have kids, have careers, have, uh, you know, uh, all their life. Right, so it's very it's very difficult to, to compete, you know, especially at a high level, without dedicating. Because now, back when I started training, I think there was less of that. People that just do jujitsu, and even myself, uh, you know, right now it's uh, that'd be great. One day, like I said, jujitsu would be my retirement. Like that's I'll do it every day when I retire. But right now, I have commitments. You know, I'm, I'm the provider for my family. You know, for my girls, I have to I have to have a, a job, a secure job, and, and I have to so. My role here has been, you know, kind of head instructor, uh, you know, marketing, business, accounting, uh, you know, who's uh, fix the toilet, you know, fix the sink, you know, uh, patch the walls, paint, paint the place, and, and it really showed. But uh, you know, but everybody here pulls together. I, I wouldn't be here today without the, the people that that have that have backed me to get here. You know, everybody. There's people that have come and gone, but uh, you know, I wouldn't be here today by any means. By other people picking me up, you know, and, and, and we've been there where, uh, you know, where you, you hit those breaking points and there's always been here, somebody here, here to kind of pick me up and be like, hey, it's going to be all right, or don't worry about it, or let me try to take some of the stress off you from, from what you're doing, so, uh, so getting back to kind of, that's the biggest lesson, again, you know, kind of dropping your ego, okay, you know, uh, 
it's not worth it to get into a fight those days. No, no, uh, you don't know again. The fight never ends there. Somebody's gonna come back, you, you beat them, and now they recognize you, and then they, you know, they wanna get you back, you know? Uh, and I think that's where jiu-jitsu doesn't have that. It, it kinda like, uh, we wrestle, it's like, okay, you submit me, sure. okay, I wanna get you back, but it's with a smile. Sure. I always think a, a lot of people here, uh, one of the other people that I got to you know, train with, Salo Rivera, one of the, you know, uh, six-time yeah. world champion. He's a beast. You know, him and his brother Simon. Salo always would, would tap you with a smile. And I, I kind of took that as like, man, he's, he's always like Fabio and, and, and Hoyler, and, you know, uh, they always have a smile on their face, and, and it's like they're here to kind of teach you, but they're here to here to make you say uncle. You know, yeah. that's what we do. Our, our sport is kind of getting people in uncomfortable situations, bringing them to the point where, you know, a joint lock where you could potentially do some damage, but then we stop and, and you tap and you say, hey, uncle, okay, you got me. Yeah. And then we shake hands again and let's do it again. Okay, well, I'm gonna to try to get you back. But it's never vindictive, you know. Uh, and some, you know, never out of aggression. Right. I, that's kind of a lesson I learned. You know, uh, one of the guys I trained with before to bring the story up, but he just armed by me real hard. Oh man, you know what? Nah. So I got real mad and come at him, and then he really turned up the juice. Oh so, man. John Plot, my my friend that I trained with out there, and he just turned it up on me. He's <laughs> at the end. I was like, geez, you know, like he's like, don't ever come at me with aggression. Like, yeah. you know. What's your problem? And that's that's probably the biggest thing. Uh, I can go back to uh, going going to Brazil. So I got to go to wow. Brazil. We got to hear about in, in 2003. So I was able to go out there and train for a month and go compete in the world. I think that's the like the travel of Mecca. Like, hey, I got to go. I got to go train every day. Be around Moira Gracie when he was still in Brazil and go train at the original at, at Gracie Umai Time, yes. five two Umai Time. That's in amazing. Rio. Uh, so what a great experience, and I wish I did it more at once. I'm, I'm really sad once they moved the World Championships to the United States because that was the reason to go there. Like, oh, the worlds. The worlds of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu are no longer in Brazil. I think that's kind of sad, but I think more people have the opportunity to come here, and maybe more Brazilians have the opportunity to come to America and experience America uh, for, the, for the world. So it is what it is at this point, but uh, being out there, I was a blue belt at the time, and uh, and I think again I came from a very hard competitive school, and I went out there with that kind of that more aggressiveness and uh, you know, really hard, really trying to, to fight hard and not use tech, use more strength and technique. And I ended up, and I heard the story about a lot of people that had the same experiences. I ended up in the other room. I was in the other room. It was only like 200 to 50, 300 pound weapons. Oh, and they just put you in there, and it's just like, oh my! They just mop the floor with you. And yeah. just like, oh my gosh! Like, you know, this it was the lesson, and uh, that's the other thing. It's really hard to, uh, you know, it's one of the greatest things that I have is that you don't have to go 110 percent all the time. That's not what jujitsu is. You can't. That you kind of go with the flow. You go with the ebbs and flow of uh, of, uh, of life of, of the of the moment. So. You know, you're not really trying to use 110% strength, and I really think that that was in my mindset as a young, young you know, I try to play basketball, and it would, I hit the ball so hard on the backboard, and, and he, he realized that, you know, Michael Jordan doesn't doesn't throw the ball. Michael Jordan has finesse. Finesse. And Jiu-Jitsu taught me finesse. Jiu-Jitsu taught me to calm down, like to try to take it easy. And then that's where the word comes from, again, people don't know Jiu-Jitsu comes from uh, Judo, but Judo was derived from Jiu-Jitsu. Jiu-Jitsu is you know, the gentle art, and Judo is the gentle way, or, you know, and it gets to a word, uh, the Japanese word of suryu zen is a phrase meaning effortless ease. Like, I want to try to use my force against you. You always hear that in martial arts and say, oh, you're going to use the guy's force against you. And it's like, you know, it seemed like too cosmic or too kind of, uh, I don't know what the word would be, but just too like magic or something sure. like, hey, it's a spell you're gonna put on, you're gonna use their energy against you. And then you start to learn, oh, when well, the person does this, and, and they pull away when you go with it. And they push when you, you, you absorb. And you start to learn how to use that. And that's, that's just phenomenal. I'm using their, 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 their strength and their, their movements against them and leverage. Of them. They, they make the move happen. So the, in jiu-jitsu, we could teach you an arm bar, we could teach you a choke, we could teach you all these things, but the hardest thing to learn is the setup. In yes. judo, they call it the kazushi. How am I gonna enter this? How am I gonna set the guy up to get to the submission? 
And that's usually on the person making a mistake or the person giving their energy one way or the other. And once they do that, the move's easy. But if, and you just have to have the timing. So jujitsu isn't about knowing all these moves and, and doing all the, and knowing all this stuff. Like Megaton was just here, he did a seminar. And he's like, really, it's like all you need is what? One arm bar, one choke, one takedown, one sweep, you know, one move from all the basic positions. And that's your move. And that can become different or it can evolve as time goes on for myself. I used to do certain moves and, you know, injuries and getting older, start to move those moves away and then you have to reinvent your game again and say, well, I'm going to use this move instead or I'm going to, I have to readapt myself because my legs aren't as strong as they used to or, or uh, you know, I have a weakness here or something. So you have to kind of learn something new. And that's what jiu-jitsu is and that was one of the statements I made it was like, there's no other sport, there's no other, I don't think any other martial art that has so many moves that it just, and every time, every year, somebody comes up with something new. And maybe it's something from 10 years ago that people forgot, but there's just so many variations to, to the chokes, to the arm bars, to the takedowns, to all this stuff that no other art has. You know, wrestling, you know, you have your single legs, your double legs, and all that. And, you know, some people get good at certain moves, but it's kind of limited. In jiu-jitsu, there's just this, it's an infinite. There's, there's just, Strategy involved is really a precise strategy, and that's why they, you always hear the guys out there saying, I want it to fall into my mouth strategy. That's a great point. A lot of good strategy. Anyways, I think that's all we got for this week. That's I appreciate you for coming on here and, uh, you know, hosting uh, the Jiu Jitsu Takedown with me. Hey, my name is Jameson Sharp, and this is Michael Graber, and we're glad you joined us. Please subscribe to us, and uh, we'll try to make a video or podcast. You know, every two weeks, but for right now, we're doing the best we can with the time we have because we both have lives. We're trying to make it happen. Please subscribe. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much.